All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome to our weekly mobile coaching stream. My name is Patrick France, senior instructor here at VectorVest. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Drew. Hopefully you guys are having a good morning so far. Uh, we should be live both on Facebook and over on YouTube. So let me just double check that Facebook is all set as well. Facebook looks like everything is working fine. So awesome. We are live on both, uh, once again, Facebook and YouTube. So welcome everybody. Um, hopefully you guys are having a good week so far. It's definitely been a rocky uh, market the last few days, but uh, you know, things are looking positive here today. We had the Fed or we had Jerome Powell testifying yesterday for the uh, Senate Banking Committee. And then markets look like they were act or, uh, taking that news favorably, but then we saw uh, some weakness coming in through the latter half of yesterday. And so now looking at today, we we're expecting to see the market start to move lower, but they're starting to reverse, starting to move higher. Uh, so we see some resiliency here so far in the markets right now. So jumping right into it though, uh, taking a look as always, what we like to do here is we first like to take a look at what's going on in the overall market. Then we'll dive into our topic of discussion. And then as always, we'll finish off with the fan favorite towards the very end. We'll analyze any stock that you want to take a look at in less than th or less than 10 seconds, really. So if you want to see your stocks analyzed, make sure to stick around towards the very end and we'll get those uh, squared away for you guys. Give me one second, making a little bit of an adjustment there. Awesome. All right. So with that, uh, let's go ahead, dive right into the software and take a look at what's going on here right now. So starting off at the very top center, part of the new updates that's come out recently, we can now see the major indices right at the very top. So we can see the Dow's up about six tenths of a percent. NASDAQ's one of the bigger winners here today, up 1.3%. S&P 500's up about eight tenths of a percent. Overall, the VectorVest composite up just shy of seven tenths of a percent here. Uh, please make this market make up his mind. I would love to, Alberto. I'll make some calls after today's uh, session here. On time. Welcome, Maria. Glad to have you here today. Hopefully you're doing well. So overall, markets are moving higher. The NASDAQ seems to be leading uh, leading the charge here. But even though the markets are up right now, as we can see, we are three ticks into the yellow. Therefore, the color guard is neutral and VectorVest still does not advocate buying any stocks at this time. So keeping us on the right side of the market here and also keeping us, um, you know, keeping our powder dry, waiting for that prime opportunity to start jumping on board here. I see a lot of new people just tuning in here. So welcome everybody. Welcome everybody who's coming in uh, at this point. Alberto, um, Aristotle, and Roger, <laughs> good morning. Hopefully you guys are all having a good morning. As always, if you guys are just tuning in, make sure, you know, while you're getting started, smash that like button down below. If you're not uh, already a part of the VV Nation, make sure to click on that red subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you get notified of all the content that we have coming out for you on a weekly basis. Also, you get notified for the uh, Financial Freedom Summit that we have coming up tomorrow. So it's gonna be a free event where you can learn a lot about investing, trading, uh, using options. So. If you haven't already checked that out, make sure to uh, you know check it out, or just simply subscribe and turn on notifications, and you'll get notified when those uh, when the or when different aspects of the the financial freedom summit come out tomorrow. So it's going to be a, a good time. Hopefully, you guys are all excited. Should be both live on Facebook and on YouTube this time as well. So if you're on either platform, you'll be able to join in and take advantage of the free content there. Hey there, Jose. Hopefully, you're doing well. All right, so as we know, the markets are rising currently, but we still have three ticks into the yellow on the market timing gauge. As we scroll down, taking a look at the color guard, which gives us more of that detailed version of what we saw in that market timing gauge, we can see price is still moving lower week over week. RT is moving lower or moving higher week over week. Buy to sell ratio flat week over week. So we look at the daily trends. Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, the price of ExtraVest Composites moving higher, so that's definitely a positive. RT is moving higher on a day-to-day -day basis, buy-to-sell ratio moving higher on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're getting a little bit of a mixed signal here so far with the color guard, which is why we have the three yellow lights across the board. So therefore, advocating caution still at this point. After the colored lights, we then get to the MTI, which stands for the Market Timing Indicator, and it's cast on a scale of zero to two. 
So above one is good, below one is bad, and the MTI is looking more of that underlying trend of the market here. So since it's below one, the underlying trend of the market still remains in that down situation. After the MTI, we then look at the trend column, which shows two parts of the trend each and every day. The first part is referred to as what we like to call the primary wave, which is just simply showing the short term or weekly trend of the market. As we can see it is down since the price of Vectorvest composite is still lower than it was compared to five trading days earlier. The second part is just simply reiterating the MTI and since the MTI is below one, the second part of that trend column will remain down as well. And then last but not least, we then like to take a look at the calls column, which stands for our confirmed calls and they're our most conservative timing system here at Vectorvest. They're our last signal we get to get into the market and our last signal we get to get out. And as we can see, we still remain in that confirmed down situation as of today. Maria is saying, sitting in cash and can't make my mind up about Amazon. Well, cash is always an option. Uh, you know, as much as some people would like to say it isn't, cash is always an option. We definitely uh, firmly believe in that position here at VectorVest. So being in cash right now throughout this volatility isn't necessarily the worst place you could possibly be. So, you know, you could be in crypto and we all know how that's been going. All right, so scrolling down a little bit, taking a look at the advance of declines. As always, whenever we're looking for a day to get in or a day to get out, we look for a two to one bias with the advance of declines. Also, welcome to the VV Nation, Thomas. Hopefully you're having a good morning. Glad you could be here today. So when we're looking for a day to buy, we wanna see twice as many stocks advancing than declining. And if we're looking for a day to play the market to the downside, then we're looking for twice as many stocks declining to advancing. This way you have the probabilities in your favor. So if you do get into a stock that day, then the odds are on your side that that trade will continue to rise or go along with the overall market. Therefore, starting you off with a little bit of a cushion on your trade. And that's always a better, uh, better way of starting off than starting off in the red. I think we could all agree on that. Good day, Cigar. Hopefully you're having a good morning. And so right now we're sitting about 55% of stocks moving higher and about 32% of stocks moving lower. So not quite meeting that two to one bias that we like to see. Therefore, best to stay on the prudent side of things and keep an eye or uh, follow the guidance of, you know, not advocating buying any stocks at this time currently. All right, so now that we've covered what's going on in the markets here today, let's go ahead, dive into our topic of discussion. I've got a new list here for you. And, um, you know, after we see the list, I want to get your guys' opinion. Uh, so make sure, you know, stick around for right now. Uh, so that way I can get your guys' insight on seeing whether or not you guys just want to have this list written down so you guys can, you know, take screenshots or watch a replay and copy these stocks into your own portfolio or own watch list or if you want to see me have it added into uh, the, the premium watch list there so you guys can access it uh, and have it stored in the mobile app without taking up a watch list space. So um, let me know. Let's, let's do this while I'm pulling it up. If you want to have these uh, or this watch list put into the mobile app as a permanent list, type in one in the chat. If you guys just want to you know write some of these down, take out your favorites, put a two in the chat. So uh, while we're going through that, let's see the ones for adding it in. And so that way it's a permanent feature in the mobile app or two, if you guys just want to write it down on your own or just take notes on your own there. I have a feeling I know the way this is going to go, but just in case, let's just make sure everybody's on the same page here. <laughs> All right. So what this is, is it's a list of hydrogen stocks. If you guys weren't there yesterday for our uh, afternoon market action with Glenn Tompkins and myself, uh, we did talk about how, you know, there's a big push inside of the oil and gas industry currently um, to start funding projects and uh, new ideas or new planning for instead of going with uh, lithium and ion batteries, that kind of thing, looking at starting uh, the production of a new fuel source of hydrogen to power cars or power vehicles going forward rather than going off the rechargeable battery aspect. So we did talk about how, you know, we're starting to see a divergence between, um, you know, two major industries and how they plan on tackling, uh, you know, the change in or the change towards clean energy and transportation more specifically uh, for the, you know, the next decade or so. Um, so, you know, if you want to go back, you can go take a look at the replay of that yesterday. But there's some some of the major um, 
players, if you will, inside the oil and gas industry, such as Chevron, Shell, Total Energies, and BP, who are putting billions of dollars into new projects, testing this, uh, this technology to try to see if it's a viable option. Because if they can make uh, hydrogen a viable option for powering uh, vehicles going forward over the next decade or so, then you could see, uh, you know, they already have the ability or they already have the expertise to change their infrastructure or to put in new infrastructure to be able to transport hydrogen uh, just like they would with oil and gas. So it, it's definitely, you know, more beneficial and it keeps their, um, you know, it keeps their businesses alive, basically. It gives them a way in to stay relevant over the next decade as we start to see countries all across the world uh, moving away from that oil dependence and starting to look for other ways of getting energy outside of oil. So, um, you know, that is their big plan is they're working right now towards that hydrogen option. Well, on the other side of things, the manufacturers themselves, they're all seeming to put a main focus on sticking with a battery powered car, basically. Uh, so therefore, that's going to be more of your lithium stocks, uh, those types of things that will help, you know, power those batteries, uh, looking at new battery technology, how they can make the batteries last a lot longer, get more power out of them, make them more efficient. But as we know, with anything that runs off batteries, the batteries tend to uh, wear out over time and lose their, you know, max total charge that they can have over time as well. So therefore, there's some some positives and, and plus they take a lot longer to charge. Uh, you know, running a, or charging a battery, you're going to be looking at, you know, four to eight hours typically. If you're using the hydrogen option, then you're looking at maybe 15 minutes to fill your car up. So, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of pluses and negatives with both sides. And it's interesting and it's definitely going to be a story that we keep an eye on, you know, going forward of which side really starts to take the lead and which side becomes the dominant player. So once again, it's a battle between the oil and gas on trying to stay relevant. And then on the other hand, you have the actual manufacturers on how they plan on or what their plans are to power their cars. Do they want to go with the fuel cell or hydrogen fuel cell or do they want to stick with the battery options? So uh, definitely going to be, you know, at this stage in the game, it's more of a speculative play because it's still so early in the life cycle of these projects. So uh, there's still going to be a lot of risk involved with them. And if you're somebody who's, you know, looking to maybe add some small positions to your portfolio, obviously wait for the market timing uh, aspect to tell us when to get in. But, you know, these are going to be some stocks to keep an eye on. And we'll go through how you can really utilize the rank analysis with VectorVest to get the stocks that are best for you. All right, so now that we've gone over a little bit of background on, on why we're doing this, why we're looking at these stocks, let's jump into the list here. So no surprise, we have the major oil players, once again, Chevron, Shell, Total Energies, and also BP coming into the top of the list. So out of the whole entire list, there's about 16 different stocks in here. No surprise, based off our overall master indicator VST, these are gonna be the top ranking players because these are gonna be the companies that have already established themselves in previous industries that are starting to get into uh, the new um, hydrogen industry, if you will. So, um, you know, they're obviously gonna have some of the better uh, fundamentals, better technicals, better analysis overall, because they've had a longer track record. So VST is a great indicator to go with, but obviously, you know, we've seen oil on a run, which has driven these stocks higher for quite some time. So if you're gonna be looking at adding some of the bigger players out of the oil industry in your portfolio, obviously with the sell recommendations and all that, I would definitely be patient, wait a while, wait for those prices to cool off a little bit and then look for a new entry if you're looking for that longer term play there. So if you're looking though, let's say for long-term potential, well, RV is the best opportunity to go for. And now of course, you're gonna have the big four major oil industry stocks coming in but then we come down a little bit, we get Cummins, which you know a lot of people are familiar with that. They already make the diesel engine for uh, Chevy, Chry or excuse me, uh, Dom Chrysler. And also it looks like some of the uh, Nissan trucks as well now are running with Cummins engines. Um, and so, you know, they're working not only to build those, those uh, diesel engines, they already have that stream of revenue coming in, but they're also working on 
building a new hydrogen engine. So if you're looking for the engine manufacturers that you know are, are already have a strong reputation, already have a lot of resources available, Cummins is definitely not a bad look to consider uh, for that aspect. Now, there are a couple ETFs in here that I did put in. Uh, HJEN was definitely one of them. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. Then the other one we have was HYDR. So both of these, if you're looking at ETFs, as always, the best thing to do is take a look at the RT uh, because the RV and RS are always going to be pegged at one with ETFs. Now, I will say this before we go any further into this list. Some of these stocks do have low volume. This is still in its early infancy stages. So whenever you're looking at, let's say, HJEN, for example, one of the things to do if you're going through this list, scroll down and make sure to check the average volume. Typically, most uh, most scans at VectorBest builds or has pre-built has a minimum average volume of, I believe, 50,000 shares. But preferably, we want to see at minimum a 100,000 shares on average. So if we look at... Um, if we look at HJEN, for example, we take a look at the average volume. Average volume is only 18,000 shares. So this is a pretty thinly traded ETF. Tells us we're early. So therefore, with getting in earlier, you do inquire or you do incur more risk, but proper management skills like we've talked about time and time again can definitely help manage that risk and make sure that uh, that risk doesn't become uncontrollable or really you know, mess up your portfolio. All right, so I see now we've covered this for a little bit. I think you guys have had some time to answer. Uh, I see a lot of ones, so therefore we will get this added into um, into the mobile app for you. It'll be a premium watch list, so make sure if you want to have access to it, you do have at minimum the premium version of the mobile app, or you have the desktop because that'll be included with it as well. Uh, one of the things, the next question I have is because some of these stocks have lower volume. I wanted to put them in here, not because you know we we'd like to get into stocks with low volume or lower volume, but because they are still so early, we could see that volume or that average volume start to pick up over time. And that would be, uh, you know, I don't want you to miss out on some opportunities just because they had lower volume now, doesn't mean that they're gonna have lower volume in the future. Uh, but one of the things I can do is when I put in that watch list into the software or into the uh, VectorVest Stock Advisory app, I can make it so any stocks that don't have a volume or, or average volume of 100,000 or less, or, or don't have at minimum 100,000 average volume, don't show up in the list. And then once they do, then they will show up in that list. So do you guys want me to build that filter in for you guys, or just leave it so you can see every single stock um, regardless of the volume? So one, if you want the, the filter put in on it, or two, if you just want the raw list. Uh, so let's see that new one coming in. Um, Jim, I believe you did. If you're just now getting here, you missed the majority of it. But as always, you can always go back and watch the replay and catch it there. All right, so seeing seeing a couple of twos, a couple of ones, a couple of twos. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys have a little bit more time. Oh, let me see if I can do this. This may make it easier here. Um, where is it? Where's my tools at? Do I have the ability to do this while I'm while I'm live? Let's see. Close that. Um. Ah, here we go. Create a poll. All right, cool. So if you're over on our Facebook page, make sure to jump over to the YouTube page right now if you wanna chime in. Uh, I'm putting a poll up so you guys should see that right at the top of the screen. This way, instead of trying to figure out how many there is, because there seems to be a mix, both one and twos, I get the aspect for both of them. Uh, go ahead, vote on that poll right now so that way we can get a clear, concise answer on whether or not you guys want the filter or not. Um, either or it's up to you guys. I'm leaving this, you know, as always the, your input goes directly into what we do here in the mobile app to make it the most, uh, promising tool for your portfolio or for all of your trading there. 
Uh, why isn't TM on the list? Toyota is collaborating with Yamaha. Um, so John, I, I looked up a lot of different uh, articles, a lot of different stocks, um, stock suggestions, and none of them ever mentioned anything about Toyota. Uh, you know, from all the lists, these were the main ones that, that we saw uh, coming up time and time again. So that's why you don't see Toyota in here. Uh, you know, doing, doing the research on them, these were the main stocks that came in uh, under hydrogen uh, specific or under the hydrogen industry there. Uh, what will the name of the list or name be of the list? Hydrogen stocks, most likely something similar to those lines. Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> fill or answer that poll if you guys haven't already, and then we'll give it a little bit longer. So far sees, or I'm seeing a majority of uh, yeses here, but we still have a lot of people out there that haven't voted. So if you guys have voted or if you guys haven't voted already, Click on that little tab at the top. Take your vote. Do you want the filter for it or not? So uh, make sure everybody chime in. If you're over on Facebook, go over to our YouTube channel real quick. Pull up the stream and you can vote there. I'm going to leave it open for a little bit longer. All right. So getting into it, though, those are going to be looking for the strongest RV. Now, if you notice, um, I believe the average. Well, I was doing when I was putting this list together, I was looking at some of the averages and the averages for these stocks or for this basket aren't the strongest things out there. Um, just to take take a look at my notes real quick. The average RV for the whole entire watch list, that's including, so out of all 16 stocks, including the big oil producers, the average RV is 0.98. So below one, that tells us that it has poor long-term potential as a basket currently. Um, we look at the average RS rating. The average RS rating is 0.84. Well below one tells us there is a lot of risk involved with this basket. We look at the average RT, 0.76, tells us right now is not the time um, to be jumping on board of these stocks. This is going to be a list that will be here so you guys can keep an eye on it and track these stocks and wait for that prime opportunity to jump on board. So even with some of these stronger performers like we have with Shell, Chevron, BP, etc., the, that they're not strong enough to pull the average list or the average rating up um, more than above that level of one. So based off of that analysis, whenever we, as we talk about time and time again, whenever we have an RV below one, we have an RS below one, that indicates a speculative basket or a speculative stock. So therefore, this is more that confirms that this is more of that speculative play currently at this time. And that goes along with our thinking of, you know, there's a battle going on between the oil get, or the oil industry and also the auto manufacturing industry. So it's still speculating on which one is going to win over the long term. But, you know, as time goes on, as we see these uh, new technologies becoming adapted, we'll start to see, you know, the clear winner showing up and you guys will have these stocks ready to go to make money off of and add them to your portfolio when the time is right. Hey, Energy, hopefully you're doing well. Glad to see you here today. Uh, still early for hydrogen. Have my watch list ready. Yeah, so it's still very early on in its life cycle. It's still more of that speculative play. But I think we all uh, you know, could agree on that uh, hands down right there. All right, so looking at that, though, we talked about how the RS of the overall basket is at 0.84. Tells us there is a lot of risk involved in these stocks. Looking at some of the bigger names, Chevron only has an RS rating of 1.06, the highest out of the whole entire basket. On a scaling of 0 to 2, that's just slightly above that level of 1. So therefore, it's slightly less risky than the average stock out there, but not great. Um, you know, typically some of the higher RS stocks, you're going to see 1.4 to 1.5 on a high RS stock. So once again, if you're more of a fundamental investor, um, somebody that doesn't like taking on a lot of risk, then obviously a speculative play like this is not going to be your cup of tea currently, but doesn't mean that that can't change over time as we start to see uh, you know, more consistency and more growth coming into some of these stocks. So if you're looking for RSO, taking out some of the bigger names, Chevron, Cummings, uh, we get APD coming in here with an RS of 1.0 exactly, then obviously the ETFs at one, and then Shell coming down, uh, at the level of one as well. And then LIN 0.92 going through the rest of the list. BP 0.91 plug power is in here. Uh, 
Ballard power or power systems BLDP another popular one that comes up time and time again also showing up here in the list fuel cell NEL uh, ADN which is one that's come in uh, requested by you guys a lot here over the last few months or last month or two um, HYZN for Motors Company and then Bloom Energy another energy company there all right so the poll is complete you guys want the filter on for volume, so therefore, I'll make sure to get that added in. Uh, Ms. Ms. Trebek, uh, the, the list is not currently in the app. You guys voted that you wanted to have it automatically added in, so it will be added into the premium watch list here later today, uh, but at the same time, you have to have, you have to be at least on the premium mobile version uh, or on a desktop to be able to see that list, so if you're not, Make sure to give our support a call, go into the app store and upgrade if you're are not already on the premium version there. Um, but if you're on the desktop, then obviously you get the premium version included there. Um, so yeah, you have a lot of different names, a lot of popular names here as well. So you guys can compare some of the bigger names to some of the more speculative names that have made headlines over the last couple of years, like Plug, uh, Fuel Cell, et cetera. And then if you're looking for which stocks are the hottest at any given time, as always, RT, relative timing looks at the short-term price trend of the stock since it's cast on a scale of zero to two above one shows the short-term trend is up below one the short-term trend is down so therefore the highest rts once the market starts picking up is going to show you the stocks that are in the strongest uptrends at that time so adn has been the strongest uptrend from the overall um, even though it's down almost 13 percent here today rt is still positive um, uh, I forgot Glenn was on this account last week. Hopefully you guys uh, weren't too hard on him. And I do appreciate if he's in here, I do appreciate him, uh, you know, coming in and, and covering and being able to hang out with you guys last week. Cause, uh, definitely, definitely made things a little bit easier. All right. So what do we have? We have a three period exponential moving average. Glenn has a 20 EMA. We're going to change that down back to my favorite of eight. Got those set, so then we go back out of here, back out of here, go zoom in. There we go, looking at ADN. So ADN has been one over the last three months, really just moving sideways. You did have this big gap up here, but as we always talk about when looking for stocks that are gapping, whenever we break down below the low of that gap up minute or that gap up day, then probability tells us we will see the stock fade the gap. And I don't wanna see anybody jumping in now when it's trading at 283, knowing that it has to go down to roughly about 120 before it fades that gap. So don't want you to start off with a big loss like that. Uh, but definitely one to keep on our radar. You know, it's definitely beaten up right now. It's been in a steady decline for quite some time. Uh, let's go to a one-year look back. Still not looking great, even on a one-year period. Now, on a positive though, I have at the bottom the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. It shows short-term and long-term trends starting to develop. On a longer-term trend, we do see that the MACD crossed above that level of zero just recently. So that gives us a positive uh, long-term sentiment on the stock. But one of the bigger things that I'm noticing is you have a steady downtrend in price here over the last few months, last three months, even longer than that overall. But looking at the MACD here at the bottom, you're seeing a nice steady uptrending MACD showing as price has been moving lower from this point till where it is now, you're seeing that short-term momentum slowly dissipating and starting to reverse course and indicating a pop is in, in the future. Well, you had that pop. So now we keep an eye on that and see if it can really start to develop or start to continue to pick up from here. And that would be your indication that, hey, this stock actually has some, some new life coming into it that we can take advantage of. So that's gonna be the first one, ADN. ADP, now starting to see a new uptrend forming. Let's go to a three month basis, actually six months, see it a little bit easier. So as we know, it's been in decline for a while, but at the same time, we're now seeing a pattern of higher highs and higher lows forming off the bottom since really about the middle of March. So during this time frame, the market has been you know, dropping uh, significantly here and lost or has been losing a lot of ground. Well, seeing this one hold steady, actually starting to form an uptrend is definitely a positive sign and shows that this stock, 
you know, may have that strength or may have that ability uh, to really, you know, outperform the markets when it has the window it sells as well. So one to keep on our radar here. But getting back out of this one, we have that list sorted by RT. Once again, though, as always, whenever looking at any list here, you always want to check the market timing on the homepage, which is why we always start off with it at the very first thing of every single session here. Uh, so if the market timing is telling us right now is not a good time to be buying, then obviously we want to hold off from buying. If you know, you're looking for a bottom fishing candidate, once we finally start to see that green light appear, we see the primary wave turn up. If you're more aggressive and looking to bottom fish, well, and you want to have maybe a play from the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen industry, you sort it by RT and then bring it to the lowest RT to the top. And those are going to be your bottom fishing plays. Now, as always, this is more aggressive, is more speculative. So be careful with that. But at the same time, you definitely have, uh, you know, some good opportunities. BLDP, for example, it's one of the worst performers in the, in the basket, but it's up one of the strongest here today. So the low or the worst performers overall on the short term basis are doing some of the, are doing, are making up some of the most ground here, uh, in current in the current environment. So, um, that's the power of bottom fishing for you, but yeah, BLDP plug and HYZN could all very well be uh, bottom fishing candidates. But once again, check volume. BLDP has average volume of 4.3 million shares uh, over a 50 day moving average. Not bad. Definitely, definitely enough volume to be able to trade liquidly on that one. Plug has average volume of 22 million shares traded. So not bad there for that one either. Looking at HYZN, average volume 1.8 million shares traded on average. So you're seeing all three of these that could be possible bottom fishing candidates has that volume criteria that we're looking for. But once again, if you're just tuning in, maybe missed that uh, tip earlier, what we're looking for is a minimum average volume of at least 100,000 shares. But don't worry when this list shows up for you guys based off your answers in the poll. Uh, when this list shows up in the premium watch list, I'm gonna put a filter on it so any stock, if it doesn't have the average volume of uh, 100,000 shares, traded then it won't show up in the list and until it does or once it does have a hundred thousand shares traded on average then it'll start to populate the list so if you notice any changes in the list from time to time that'll be why it's because of that volume filter so make sure as always keep that in mind all right so that's going to do it here uh any questions or any of these stocks you know maybe you guys already hold or maybe ones that you guys already had on your list or radar that you're keeping an eye on for because you know realistically um this is something that's going to be um, definitely an interesting story or an interesting battle to watch as we move forward over the next decade. You know, once again, it's going to be the big energy producers versus the manufacturers. And, uh, you know, they both have their own vision of how they see the future playing out. Now it's going to come down to who can uh, execute and who can provide the best uh, best potential from these from these two technologies here. So with that, um, all right, perfect. So <laughs> that's gonna do it for this part of it here. Uh, let's see, if you guys wanna have your own stocks analyzed, go ahead and start putting those into the chat. Um, let me know what stocks you guys wanna see and we'll go ahead and analyze those for you. And while you guys are putting those in, I'm gonna take a quick drink as and take a, take a quick breath here. <laughs> All right, so got a few coming in so far. As always, if you ever want to analyze any stock in, in inside the Stock Advisory app, all you got to do is simply tap on the magnifying glass in the upper right. Just type in your symbol. So NUE is our first one we're going to look at here today. NUE. As always, you get the quick graph at the very top. Right below that, you get four indicators. All four indicators are going to be cast on a scale of zero to two. Above one is good. Below one is bad. The first one is the RV or relative value, which is looking at the long-term potential over the next one to three years. 1.71 tells us this stock has good long-term potential over the next one to three years. The next indicator is the RS or relative safety. It's looking at the amount of risk involved with the stock based off the fundamentals or its balance sheets essentially. And above one tells us there is less risk associated with it. Below one tells us that there is more risk associated with it. 
So NUE has an RS of 1.26, tells us it has less risk associated with it than the average stock out there. But then we look at timing. RT is standing for the relative timing or simply the short-term price trend of the stock. Anything above one, the closer to two it is, the stronger the uptrend. Below one, the closer to zero it is, the stronger the downtrend. So for NUE right now, 0.4 tells us it's in a really strong short-term decline. So while this stock has good long-term potential, it has less risk associated with it, so good fundamentals there, right now is not the time to be long in it since the RT is at 0.4. Overall, the stock is favorable, but the timing is timing is of the essence, and right now is not the time uh, to be in that one. Uh, what is this premium app? So Roger, there's a few different versions of the VectorVest stock advisory app. Uh, you have, I forget the names of them, the exact names of them, but it's uh, essential, like, uh, essentials, basic, and then the premium version. So there's three different versions that have um, different access allowed with them. Uh, so you, the premium is the top, just strictly mobile version. Um, if you're only using mobile, if you have the desktop, then you automatically get the premium version included with it. So um, if you're on desktop, you don't have to worry about it. If you're just strictly a mobile user, make sure you do have the premium version uh, you can check your subscription, I believe, through that upgrade subscription option right there. All right, so NUE covered that one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next, AEE. AEE, so now let's see how fast we can actually analyze it now, we know, or now that we're familiar with the indicators. So AEE has good long-term potential, a little less risk compared to the average stock out there. It is in a short-term decline, however, so overall the stock's about average. Uh, does the free trial Glenn talks about for 99 cent desktop allow you to preview the app? Yes. So if you have the uh, desktop, whether it's a trial or the desktop subscription there, it will automatically include the app. All you have to do is download the app and sign in using the same username password you have uh, or you use to sign into the desktop. I don't see the premium watch list on the desktop version. Uh, that's because they don't come from that watch list section. They come from or the majority of them come from, well, it's a lot of backend stuff, um, but the majority of them come from the Unisearch tool, uh, and that's why that's why you won't see them in the watch list section there. Um, hopefully that answers your question, though. So yeah, AEE, good long-term potential, a little less risk than the average stock out there. Fortunately, timing is not of the essence right now, therefore, stock's about average at best. Um, let's see, CVE, CVE, uh, I have the desktop real time, but the premium doesn't appear on my phone. Uh, so Roger, if it, um, you won't see the word premium like you see in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, uh, if you're on the desktop, but yeah, you have, the premium is the, the top tier of just mobile. So, um, if you have the desktop, you automatically get included the uh, the top tier of mobile as well. So regardless of what it says, uh, if you don't see the stock advisory app on your phone, that means you need to just download it. But uh, if you already have it installed, just sign in using the same username and password you use on the desktop, and it'll give you everything that you see here, plus uh, a slight different changes on a few things um, for desktop users as well. Um, so... I still don't see the watch list in the user search. I don't have time to go through all of those right now, but they are all, all the premium watch lists come from somewhere inside the unit search tool. Um, I forget exactly, but I'm the one who uploads the vast majority of those. So I'm the one who makes sure, uh, but they have to come from the unit search tool and they have to be on the main uh, program that everybody has access to, to be able to put them into the app for us. All right, so uh, CVE, stock has good long-term potential, a little less risk associated with it. However, right now, the timing shells us it's in a short-term decline. Overall, it's a good stock. It's had a great run, but that's, that run is cooling off, so right now is not the time to be long in it. Uh, let's see, DAC. Oh. DAC, good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. You're in a short-term steady decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable right now. Uh, SJT, San Juan Basin, good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. 
you're in a steady short-term decline. Overall, the stock is a good stock, just not the right time to be long in it. A lot of these stocks, especially out of the petroleum industry, have had pretty big runs here. And so, of course, we're going to see some bigger pullbacks occurring because people are going to be locking their profits in, um, you know, in some of their bigger winners. And this has definitely been one that's been in the top VST list for quite some time, for a few months now. Uh, so, yeah, you're definitely seeing it uh, taking some profit right now as we speak. Um, let's see. Etsy, E-T-S-Y. Looking at Etsy. Etsy has good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. You're in a really strong short-term decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable here. Um, but also, if you guys are having trouble finding a watch list or wanting to find something that uh, is in the app and you want to find it in the desktop, you can always give our support a call as well, and they can help you locate that there as well. Um, so I forgot about that. Wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that. Our support team is phenomenal, and they're always willing to help you out and get you the answers you're looking for there. All right. Um, so Etsy, let's see what else we had. Apps, A-P-P-S. So apps has good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. You're in a steady free fall right now. So overall, the stock's about average, but I'd be extremely careful with what we see with that timing right now. Um, one moment here. All right. Okay, so we got apps. Let's see what else we have. CVE, we covered that. GME. Of course, we'll take a look at GameStop here today. So GameStop is a speculative play, has poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. It's a speculate or speculative bet. I think we can all agree upon that. But timing is starting to pick back up. RT is at 1.36, telling us it's in a nice steady uptrend right now. So overall, stocks average. The uptrend strong enough to offset the amount of uh, speculation involved with it. So the VST comes out exactly at that level of one. So interesting there. Um, let's see, BLNK. BLNK. Poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. So overall, not favorable currently. VST. VST, good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline on a short-term basis. Overall, the stock's about average. Another big runner here that is just taking a breather right now. Um, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those stocks have to do that to get, um, you know, to to make their price more attractive if they want to have another run or if they want to continue to move higher over time. All right, DRN. So I believe this is a triple leverage contra ETF on uh, the real estate market. It's one of the stocks I brought up uh, to our afternoon market action a couple of weeks ago. And um, so therefore, since it's an ETF, your primary focus is going to be RT. At 0.35, it tells us it is in a strong short-term decline. Um, but this is more of that speculative, wait, direction. Oh, this is the bulls. Never mind. Excuse me. Sorry about that, Jay. Uh, so this is the bullish ETF. Let's go ahead and verify that real fast. Um, daily investment results before fees and expenses, 300% of the um, the REIT index. So, okay, so this one is going with the real estate market. So no, that's why I'm seeing the RT at 0.35. Uh, yes, it is in a state of decline. No surprise there. The real estate markets are... Um, cooling off extremely fast with the rise in interest rates. So therefore, this has been a time to stay away from this one. Uh, what is it? DRV is the ETF. Let's go see. DRV is the, uh, is this the inverse? Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, 300% of the inverse of the MSCI US re index. So this is the one I came, I brought to the table for our, uh, our afternoon market action a few weeks ago. This is the one that's in a really strong uptrend. RT's at 1.33. So therefore, making money overall, it's favorable here. Uh, SAFM. SAFM, good long-term potential, less risk associated with it. You're in a nice steady short-term uptrend. So overall, stock is favorable. Um, AMZN. 
Amazon, poor long-term potential, but does have solid fundamentals. They're growing their earnings quarter over quarter, year over year. So therefore less risk associated with the stock based off of fundamental readings. Unfortunately, even with that stock split that they announced, it's not helping. They're not seeing that split effect going on. And the RT is definitely suffering at 0.55. So right now tells us it is not the time to be jumping on board. Even though prices do look attractive in this short term decline, prices could become more attractive in the very near future. So overall stock is, um, is not performing nearly as well as we want it to be. Uh, go see EQT or is not favorable there. EQT, good long-term potential, about average risk associated with it here. Timing though, timing is of the essence and right now is not the time to be long in it. With an RT of 0.57, it is in a strong decline. Overall, the stock's favorable, but the timing is really the main issue with this one right now. All right, um, we got a couple of more. So SRNE, SRNE, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. However, you are in a really strong short-term uptrend currently, so overall stock is variable. If you're a speculative uh, momentum trader, this could be a very interesting one to play around with. I know we've made a lot of money on this stock years ago in the Jockey Club. Jerry made a phenomenal trade with this one. Um, but since that point, the stock's been steadily moving lower. Could be round two coming up. So keep it on that timing, especially if you're looking for momentum trades. All right, and last but not least, we got one more coming up here, SNOW. So SNOW, poor long-term potential, has a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable. How this stock has such poor fundamentals, poor RT, poor VST, and is still trading at $140 a share blows my mind. Um, so this one I'd be extremely cautious with, and if the markets get more bearish, this would definitely be one to look at playing to the downside. All right, so on that note, let's go back to the homepage here. Major indices cooling off a little bit. The Dow is now only up about a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ's up just shy of 1.2%. S&P 500 cooling off about half of what it had earlier, uh, about half a percent higher here today, same as the Vectorvest composite. So therefore, we are still three ticks into the yellow. The color guard is neutral and VectorVest does not advocate buying any stocks at this time here. If we scroll down, taking a look at the advanced declines, 53% of stocks are moving higher, 36% of stocks are moving lower. So not going the right way for the advanced declines the way we want to see it. Not getting to that two to one ratio. If anything, starting to come down closer to that one to one ratio. So therefore, telling us, hold off, be safe out there, keep the powder dry, wait for the right opportunity. Things don't go down forever. So eventually we will start seeing the reversal. When we do, the guidance in the homepage will definitely alert us of that so that way we can jump on board with it. So once again, thank you all for your time here today. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, give me today, maybe tomorrow, the latest uh, to get everything together to have that put in the app. Um, so look forward to seeing a hydrogen stocks watch list inside the mobile app in the next 24 to 48 hours, I'd say at the very latest. So um, keep an eye on that. It will be added in there in the very near future. So on that note, it's been my pleasure being with you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, if you haven't already, smash that like button. Do that if you want to show support for the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, but definitely helps us out with the YouTube algorithms. And if you're not already part of the VV Nation, Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well and turn on notifications because especially with the Financial Freedom Summit coming up tomorrow, you won't want to miss out on some great courses that we have coming out for you tomorrow. So as always, make sure, or, oh yeah, one last thing, Glenn Tompkins, he does have his trending Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern today. So if you want to see what's making the news, what news is driving the markets, come hang out with him at 2 p.m. And if you're nice enough to him, maybe he'll even sing for you. So uh, make sure to go show them some love a little later here today as well. So on that, it's been my pleasure being with you guys. Have a great rest of your trading day. Be safe out there. Have a great weekend. And until next time, toodles.